Thank you. Thank you. You know, before I start with the panel, and a lot of you guys have been there since morning. Sorry, please don't do this. I actually want to come to you only. You know, I realized yesterday morning that I'm not the smartest person in the room. I can't comprehend, hear, and translate and communicate so fast as these guys have been doing, right? So I think hats off to. Uh, I, I, I think this team has been doing an amazing job. And, you know, we talk about hand eye coordination in sports. I think there's a lot that's happening between what we speak here and what you see. Thank you. So, uh, you know, um, as I think we've seen this through yesterday, right? And, and also in the discussions today, that a lot of focus now is about value add, is about technology, is about innovation, right? And, you know, we, we, we have an esteemed panel here who actually done wonders in their own space uh, in their respective GCC. So, what we're going to talk about uh, uh, now is going to be, you know, some of the technology innovations and, you know, specifically around platforms, because that's a choice that's starting to become available to say that, you know, should we take a platform-based approach, whether it's for internal development or whether it's for external customer-facing products and services. So, you know, do a little deep dive on that. But before we get there, I just wanted to maybe request our panelists and maybe, Sheena, I'll, I'll request you to start, is, you know, give us a little view of what Broadridge does in India, specifically what kind of innovations are you looking at and is there something around platforms that you're building? And maybe Guru after that and Sumita. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, pleasure, absolute pleasure and honor to be here. Um, Broadridge Financials is, a, um, is two kinds of business. We are in the investment communication. We are also in the uh, global technology business around capital markets, wealth and asset management. From an India perspective, every single product and application that Broadridge has is, is either developed out of India and or serviced out of India. Uh, we are about 5,000 people in India, which is a little higher than one third of the population of Broadridge globally. Um, about 65% of that is in technologies and the rest is in operations. Uh, from an innovation standpoint, I think, uh, and, and specifically from a platform standpoint, if I were to talk about, you know, we are there in shared services, so things like Workday, you know, Oracle Fusion, all of that from a shared service perspective is something that we do, and we've got teams in India actually implementing and maintaining that for all of the globe. But if you really take it down to what affects our customers, right? So things like GitHub, uh, MuleSoft API gateways, those are the kind of things that we have and that enable our developers and the experience for our developers to really uh, fast track and you know, help in productionizing uh, engineering faster. Take it to the next level where you want to talk about you know, helping your customers. So we have platforms that we have developed, which is uh, you know, something called the Workstation uh, Framework. We have an API gateway, um, uh, which our customers can use. And we actually monetize that. We also have a blockchain ledger-based uh, platform, which um, has gone live recently and has, has now started transactions happening around it. In the a lot of work happening around really Sure. No, that's great. I think he's not able to hear you. Yeah. Can't hear. And and am I loud and clear? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. So sure, sure. Uh, uh, Guru, if I can come to you, and you know, Google is known for innovation. There are various platforms, whether it's the Android, whether it's the cloud platform, or others, right? You want to just throw a light about from a GCC or India perspective, uh, both internal and external, what kind of innovations and something around platform that you guys are doing? Yeah, I think I have the great uh, privilege of not having to explain what my company does, which is uh, which takes away quite a bit of airtime from me, which uh, Sheenam had. I think um, you know the way the centers at Google are set up worldwide are all the teams are essentially very much a part of the global setup. So the work that we do here is globally relevant, including the one that my, my team works on. Uh, I'm part of the Android team, and I serve the team here. And pretty much everything that we do 
uh, at Google has a platform focus to it because uh, you know I think it's important for us to understand you know there are a variety of terms thrown around when I was a child the only thing I knew when somebody said platform and I'm going to date myself here is a railway platform I didn't think of anything else but I would challenge all of these all of the folks uh, here especially in the software industry how many of you ever think of a railway platform when you think of platforms when somebody says platform you're already thinking of how to monetize it how to you know capture value and deliver impact through it so i think platforms are extremely germane and within the context of google pretty much everything that we do we think of frameworks we think of platforms we think of a way in which a massive number of users and different constituents can derive value from the platform and bill gates said it best when he talked about what a platform is versus other forms where people might come together and facilitate interactions where the cumulative value that is derived by the constituents of the platform far exceeds the value derived by the entity that created it and i think that is a guiding principle for many of our platforms we want our users to capture quite a bit of value and i will try to speak as slowly as possible as well because our gentleman here is doing such a fabulous job uh, on behalf of uh, inclusion and i really really admire that thank you gaurav for highlighting it we are amongst a lot of music uh, sumit if i can come to you and firstly congratulations i know you recently got announced as the global technology lead and since yesterday we've been talking about you know uh, teams from or leaders from gcc is actually taking global roles and positions i think sumit is a classic example of that so big hand for sumit um, but Sumit, in, in, in terms of you getting there, I'm sure there's a lot of value that the GCC has added in the technology space. So we want to just talk about that and within that context, platforms as well. Sure. No, thank you, Gaurav, and pleasure to be here. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about Cargill. I have to explain what Cargill does because, uh, you know, my friend doesn't have to explain about Google. Uh, Cargill is one of the largest food and agriculture companies uh, in the world. Uh, fun fact. 20% uh, of the world's food actually moves through Cargill supply chains. It's a huge global system of, of buying, processing, and moving food uh, around the world. Uh, when it comes to platforms and innovation, I think it all starts with the purpose. Uh, our purpose is to nourish the world in a safe, sustainable, and responsible way. But if you think about nourishment and food, it tends to be very local, very local context, what we like, what we don't like how food gets consumed in every region differently. And so the GCC um, in India decided to sort of understand Indian customers, Indian food preferences, and funnel that back into Cargill's global system. So essentially to take advantage of our presence in India and bring India to the forefront in the overall Cargill league. So to that end, uh, we built out an innovation platform, we call it Edge. And this innovation platform encourages our own employees to launch businesses in India. So right now we have two local businesses running in India. Uh, both are generating revenue, and not yet profit, they will get there. Both are generating revenue, both are serving customers. Uh, one of them is serving farmers around Davangere region in Karnataka, so we have a huge presence in Davangere. And the second business is serving pet parents in Bangalore. So if you have pets, uh, we have something that we can offer you, right? And, and these are full-size teams with, you know, customer operations, product managers, customer support. We have a local office in Davan Giril. These are real businesses which are selling products and services in India, gathering the insights, and then sending, you know, sending those back to Kargil. You know. And I can talk more about them uh, as we progress. But overall, I think leveraging our presence locally to generate local insights has been a huge learning opportunity and actually helps us develop leaders for the future because you actually have two pnl leaders sitting in india now generating revenue no that's great and and sumit you talked about these two examples they were not started as csr they were started as monetizing or you know giving opportunities to your talent right no, no, these are not CSR. I mean, they, they get, uh, both these startups got like a very small amount of funding on stage one, only $10,000. Uh, 
they proved their case then some more money then some more money and then some more money they can get killed or they can get more funding every three months so every three months they have to meet stiff targets um, and uh, and it, it's a very competitive process uh, to, to get that money nothing to do with csr you really have to prove the worth that your business is no very interesting uh, guru if i can come to you and and you talked about um, within google everything that you do is around platform so you think platforms first right now I mean, how do you evaluate and second is in your view what are some of the advantages disadvantages of taking a platform based approach i think uh, the advantages are very very numerous right especially when uh, for example at google we have several platforms if you look at uh, maps as a platform i think it powers experiences of practically every single human being who wants to go anywhere in the world there is a great reliance on the platform uh, to do things that are super useful in people's lives if you look at android the team that i work on uh, similarly there are many billions of people who have these devices in their hands and derive great value and for most people especially in the developing world it happens to be the very first computing device that they've ever laid their hands on so i think uh, the advantages for Uh, a company like google which also is a you know i would say a great privilege it's uh, to look at it unselfishly in that sense is that we get an opportunity to facilitate amazing magical hitherto unforeseen interactions on our platforms we are able to unlock value that was probably not even imaginable as a, as a result of the technology and as a result of all the great progress that has been made uh, across several dimensions and you know it's not too long ago and you know i see a fair number of gray haired people uh, in this room uh, though that number of gray haired people in the room continues to shrink which is our ecosystem is getting more and more younger uh, which is fabulous but i think it's not too long ago that many of us can you know at least some people in the room let me see like, quick show of hands how many of you know what a trunk call is Wow, this is a surprising number of people. I think I, I, either you know it from personal experience, or you've watched it in a movie, or you've heard your grandparents talk about it. I don't know, but I mean that used to be the time when you had to call somebody, you had to book. If the person is not in the same local uh, area code, then you had to book a trunk call. And then here we are. You can call anybody anywhere in the world anytime you want. And uh, these these are things that we take for granted today. And I think. the these have all been made possible because of the platforms that not just google but several other companies in the world have built right now the i wouldn't call it a disadvantage right i i don't know if i want to position any of these as disadvantages i certainly don't but having a platform mindset automatically imposes a certain degree of responsibility because at the end of the day a platform essentially is a facilitation of various constituents and their desires on the platform now if that has to happen you have to be fair to every constituent so a platform's job is not only to facilitate critical user journeys on that platform but also to dispense any conflict that may arise on the platform with extreme fairness and then there's also an element of regulation that you have to comply with as a platform the more people you can impact the more relevant it is for uh, certain aspects to be compliant with regulation as well so all of these are responsibilities i would say that sometimes on the outside people might look at a platform company and say why are they moving so slowly why can't they innovate faster but these responsibilities in terms of fraud prevention fairness regulatory compliance these are necessary they are the right things to do and not a disadvantage but definitely something that could sometimes result in some slowness in bringing uh, innovation to bear you don't know guru i think that's a, a and, and that's a fair point because platforms can tend to slow you down but for all the right reasons right but they also give you scalability to build a lot more and leverage what we have right okay um so me if i can come to you um you know one of the risks and we just talked about saying let's build the platform on top of that we can then continue to build other services etc but you know technology is evolving in fact it's evolving faster than ever and today what we call as platform tomorrow might not be relevant for the new technology so how do you actually make that choice and how do you see some of these new technologies potentially impacting or or anything that you can share with the audience in terms of how to go about making that choice look the technology evolve 
evolution and the new platforms are certainly important for a platform approach, right? But the question is, how do you also improve the access to that platform? How do you make sure that sort of, that a wider population can access it versus this narrow, narrow, narrow population of techies and software engineers? So just going back, for example, to the you know um, Kaggle platform that I was talking about, uh, one of the sort of policies we have is we don't limit the access to the innovation platform only to techies or someone who is an experience working in that area. We say anyone who has a great business idea and is willing to work hard, we are going to give you money, you hire your tech team, you hire a support team, and you start running the business. So some of our best ideas, interestingly, are coming from employees who, who actually spent their life in villages. They grew up in villages, they moved to cities, so they know the opportunities and the challenges that farmers have. Uh, so for example, you know, we have three chartered accountants. They came up with the idea of how can, what can you do with ethanol trading in India? So they they, they're trying to build a startup around that. Uh, another, another woman employee who came from a village said, we have a lot of used cooking oil they get, that gets thrown away. How can you convert that to a biofuel? So she's trying to figure that, uh, that problem out. So I think you need, so there is definitely tech behind their ideas, but if you open up the access, it just gets, do the best ideas going from everywhere. Sure, no, great. Um, Sinam, if I can come to you, and we just talked about, let's say, leadership over the last two days here, and also talent, which has been a big cause of concern, as well as the biggest strength that we have in, in GCs and from India. Um, if you look at innovation and platforms, based innovation, is there a different talent strategy or, you know, both from a leadership as well as incoming talent perspective that you follow or need to see? Question. I think um, it's important for us to figure out what is it that you want, right? And what are the business outcomes that you would want to achieve? Now, if I look at ourselves, right, Broadridge is a 60-year-old um, SaaS organization. Our oldest product is a 60-year-old product on mainframes, right? Uh, modernizing that, it's easy, it's time consuming, it'll take a lot of effort, take a lot of money, but do we want to monetize is one question. The second is that, you know, the way our customers are consuming our services is changing. So a degree of monetization is necessary, uh, modernization is necessary, a degree of moving to a platform-based, microservices-based architecture is therefore very, very essential for us. Um, AI is eating everything, right? So we know that if you do not embed AI even into your mainframe products, it's going to have a problem. Now, from our platform perspective, from our, you know, the solutions perspective, trillions of dollars, trillions of transactions flow every day. So we have the data. Now, if I have to just go back and say what I want to do from an AI perspective, there are two things that I would want to do. I would want to hire talent and, you know, bring in talent, buy talent inorganically. But really, for my business to succeed, I need my business guys, and I need people who are the domain guys, who are SMEs in my business, to start thinking AI. So there is a lot of upskilling, reskilling, whatever you want to call it, that would be necessary. So the way we structure it is that we have at least 60 to 70 percent of any new team that we are forming from internal talent, whom we kind of say, let's try to reskill, upskill, give them better talent. If you're doing Java and you have to be a full stack developer, what does that mean? If you're moving from a scrum into a lean organization, and you want to do, you know, everything, everybody does everything. How do you make a developer learn testing skills and vice versa? So a lot of uh, effort gets spent on that. But there is also a significant thing that we do in terms of bringing in fresh talent so that, you know, we A, learn from what's happening in the industry, and B, there is, you know, that marriage of knowledge and the domain which we need as a fintech and also of the technology. So that's one key tenet of, from our talent perspective. Um, 
The second is, I think, as leaders, uh, we have to have the ability to see how the industry that you are in will focus and improve in the future, right? So everybody is talking gen AI, uh, generative AI. Now, what does Gen 3, Gen 4 mean? And how can products offering solutions change for our customers to their customers? is something that we have to start focusing on. So leaders, I think, have to invest in trying to build that vision and that strategy and see what can be done. About a decade back, when blockchain was not really new, but blockchain was new at Broadridge, the idea, the inception happened at Broadridge India. So Broadridge India actually owns all of the, broad, uh, the blockchain products that we do from in, in Broadridge, right? So, you have to have that ability to decide and take some calculated risks also. That's amazing. I mean, uh, blockchain has been a fairly, I would say, unexplored and newer technology. And if that's being driven completely out of India, I think that's amazing. Uh, I, if I can just stay with you, and you know, this is a room full of leaders here who, who, who've been, you know, dr who are driving a lot of initiatives within respective GCC. So tomorrow when they think about innovation or platform-based innovation, what would you advise them? I think uh, the advice would be to first think what is the business outcome that you want to achieve. In my opinion, technology is always an enabler. It's not the decision to do it, right? So don't get, there will always be a new technology that will come in, something that promises to disrupt everything. Uh, Guru talks about us aging. We are old people. We have seen at least three disruptions in our lifetime of where, you know, this is going to change the way we work and people will lose their jobs and stuff like that and I have stopped to worry about all of those things. But I think from a sheer platform perspective, think about business. What is the outcome that you need to develop? What is the best technology therefore available in the market? Is the technology that you are going to invest in uh, coming from an organization that is future thinking, right? So will they be able to adapt to changes and are they able to give you solutions that will take you to the future? And the third would be um, fail, fail early, right? So do a lot of experimentations, involve your customers, and start to think about those changes, right? From a technology perspective, invest in microservices like Guru talked about. Really think about strategies that uh, are small in nature, are, are Provide, going to provide instant customer delight and therefore start building. Sure, sure. No, I think that's very good advice for uh, people here. Uh, Guru, uh, some of what we talked about is not necessarily often as decision making that sits in the GCC in India, right? Now, there are obviously global stakeholders involved, a lot of other dynamics at play. So, any advice to this group to say how they can navigate that when they actually want to start a journey like this? That's, that's probably a very difficult question with a minute left on the clock, but uh, I, I think, you know, organizational culture uh, plays a huge role in how ideas like this are sourced from different parts of the world, including India, and I'd say that every individual company does it slightly differently, so I don't know if any advice that I can give can be taken as, as is and uh, implemented somewhere. I think, but certain broad things are true everywhere, right? Uh, if you start with what is right for the customer, always a great place to start because it gives you a very firm footing on why you're arguing for a certain position. The second is, if you rely on a healthy amount of discovery of user need, which is backed by data, that you can present in an insightful way so that people can see, not only are you a deep expert in what you're talking about, but you're also able to catalyze the insights and present them with clarity that lends a degree of confidence to them that you can actually do this, always better, right? So these are uh, probably patterns that stand the test of time, culture, etc. Every company will probably get impressed by these things if you do them right. So the advice for me would be one, first of all, do a lot of discovery and dig in deep to find out what exactly the customer need is, start with that. And second, rely on a ton of data to present your insights so that you can convince people with objectivity rather than emotion or just, you know, selfish, uh, uh, self-desire to promote the GCC. Uh, Sumit, one last question. I know we are almost out of time. Uh, 
as a leader, uh, what is one thing that the team here can do differently from tomorrow to be able to drive more innovation, specifically platform-based innovation? I don't think I'm going to say anything different from what's been said. I think it all sort of requires you to focus on how do you unlock customer value. Is really, really understand what the customers want, where they are going, what their evolving needs are. Spending 90% of the time understanding customers and then their problems generally allows you to get better at identifying opportunities and then present them the right way uh, to get the support. But I think one line message, focus on customer. So we are out of time here, but again, Thank you so much. I think two words that I heard or registered at least for me, one is customer and second is empowerment of people and talent to be able to drive and make those choices. And with that, thank you so much, Guru, Sheenam and Sumit for your time and your views. And I hope this was useful for the group. Thank you, Gaurav. A uh, big round of applause. For, for more content on tech and leadership, subscribe to NASCOM YouTube channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.